It's a wonder they didn't shoot him. <laughs> How could they wear clothes like that in the open? <laughs> you haven't seen anything yet. May I have this dance? <laughs> Get out, Lynn. Come on, Richard, show him. Come on, Richard, come on. Don't step on his toes. Watch your hands, Richard. Time for that to go, go, Richard. Go. What's the matter, Uncle Max? What's the matter? I will tell you what's the matter. What is it? So easy it is to make fun of things. Believe me, in this dress, beautiful your mother was. I know, Uncle Max. We were just having some fun. You are making fun from things you don't know about. Oh, we know all about 1929. We've seen it in the movies. The stock market crash. Prohibition. Sure, that was when everybody drank, whether they liked it or not. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were there, maybe, no? No, but I know all about it. <laughs> <laughs> Some things there are that even a man of the world like you wouldn't know. Like what, Uncle Max? Like this. No matter how bad things can look, always they could be worse, maybe. This I carry around, so the same mistake never again I won't make. Oh, it's just a strip of paper. Oh, but what a strip. The first time this piece of paper I saw, the end of the world I thought it was. Twenty-four, twenty-three, eighteen, seven and a half, minus ten. I am wiped up. How can this be? Max, as your lawyer, I warned you this was going to happen. 
Who could trust a lawyer? As guardian of your niece's estate, you should have done as I told you. You should have invested it all in government bonds. What? And two and a half percent only I get for her? Am I crazy? I made a fortune today. I sold short. Show short, he said. Who, who did you sell to? You. He is on how I am short. How can I tell Nanette? Pick up the phone and call her. <laughs> At her dancing lesson, she's I wouldn't disturb her. Why not? It could be maybe her last dance. Her uncle is taking care of her millions. She thinks somebody should be taking care of her uncle. How much I long to hold you in my arms This time is my time T'will soon be goodbye time And in the starlight Hold me tight With one more little kiss Say nighty night I long to hold you in my arms This time is my time It'll soon be goodbye time And in the starlight Hold me tight With one more little kiss Say nighty night have eyes for you. Here, Nan, sit down. Thank you. You've got all the money left in New York. Why do you knock yourself out this way? Because I want to get somewhere in the theater. In plain words, I am stage struck. Well, I guess we're all hams underneath. Right. Did the crash catch you very badly, Nan? Not me. I have a smart uncle. Mine's in government securities. You know what I'd do if I had your dough? What? Why don't you marry me and find out? That's a tough way to get information. <laughs> no, you don't get it. Tommy wants a rich but honest woman to take him away from all of this. Somebody should. Correct. <laughs> take me to a little cottage on the side of a hill. Yes. Where I can spend the rest of my days looking out over acres and acres of cool, green money. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Ned Carter, this is a surprise. Fancy meeting you in a place like this. How'd you know I was here? Elementary. Singing lessons Monday and Wednesday. Dancing lessons Tuesday and Friday. You're a stickler for schedule. Mm -hmm. And you don't happen to be on it this afternoon. Wait a minute, baby. Don't act that way. Look, I told you that I didn't want to see you again until you paid back that loan. All right, so we had a little quarrel over dough. Every time I call the house, I get the brush off. I've missed you, baby. The flame's still burning. There's a fire extinguisher around the wall. I've got to dress. <laughs> Just an act. The kid's really crazy about me. Yeah. Sticks out all over. And if B. Darcy hears that rumor, you'll be sporting a mouse. Don't worry, don't worry. I keep my women separated. You sure do. In class. If you two would spend more time rehearsing the show rather than giving advice and dancing lessons, we might get somewhere. You can't expect us to live on the money we loaned you. There's been a crash, remember? Money's tight. You guys have got to help me to get Nan interested in the show again. Not a chance. That's your racket. She's too swell a kid to be led to the slaughter. 
Somebody's got to come across. Tell her about the new numbers. Tell her anything. Only get her up to the theater. And have you put the bite on her? Not a chance. It's a great show. She'll triple her money. Triple her money? Maybe. Look, she drops much more than that every day at Mahjong. Will you stop worrying about her? Here's your coat. We've got to get up to the theater. They're waiting for us. Hey, now, wait a minute. Why should I be the one to stay here and bring her to the theater? What are you complaining about? Look at my date. <laughs> How are you, gentlemen? Well, look, the lawyer's down there trying to keep the scenery and the costumes on the cup. So what? We've got to show him a couple of numbers. Is crazy rhythm in any kind of shape? Well, as good a shape as I am. Well, I guess that'll have to do. All I'm asking, gentlemen, is a little time, a little credit. When the show opens, you'll get 100% gravy on every dollar. Why, I personally guarantee you... Mr. Blair, that... can I speak to you for a minute? Not now, honey. I'm busy with these gentlemen. We're... Uh, uh, gentlemen, may I present Miss... Uh, uh... Mabel Wiley. Mr. Blair promised me a part in the show, but up to now, I'm just a pony. You're a what? A pony. Theatrical lingo. A pony's a hoofer. Oh, very attractive young lady, Blair. I should think you could find her a part somewhere. Sure, sure, I'll find something. Run along, honey. Join your stable mates. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go, Tommy. Ready at this end. Let's go. Come on. Just use your imagination, gentlemen. Picture the gorgeous set Mr. Waltz is going to give us. Uh-huh. And Mr. Grover's sensational costumes. Maybe. Just see it in your mind, boys. It's terrific. The lure of the jungle, the weird beating of the drums, the madness of crazy rhythm. Crazy rhythm, here's the doorway. I'll go my way, you'll go your way. Crazy rhythm, from now on we're through. Here is where we have a showdown. I'm too high hat and you're too low down. Crazy rhythm, here's goodbye to you. They say that one eyebrow meets the low brow walking along Broadway. Soon the highbrow, he has no brow. Ain't it a shame? And you're to blame. What's the use of prohibition? You produce the same condition. Crazy rhythm, I've gone crazy too.
Anyway, boys, got ten more just like it. The show can't miss. That remains to be seen. It's sure fire. My judgment never fails. Ask anybody. They'll tell you about me. We have. And they have. All right, so you asked the wrong people. Would Annette Carter be on her way up here to toss a ton of money in my lap if she weren't sure it was a sock cola? You mean the daughter of H.B. Carter? I don't mean Little Red Riding Hood. Do you know Miss Carter? Know her? Why, we're engaged. Of course, I didn't want the little woman dabbling in show business, but uh, I'm a pushover for tears. This is just a small part of the show. We've got a great opening. Act one, curtain goes up. Now, just imagine I'm 40 beautiful girls. All right, 30. I'm sorry. I'm awfully sorry. End of act one. Second act, completely different. Curtain goes up. Yeah, all right, all right, Blair. That's enough, that's enough. I'm only trying to give you an idea. Well, we'll talk it over and let you know Monday. I'll see you later, Blair. But you haven't seen the third act. Larry just wants you to watch a rehearsal. I'll watch my bankroll, too. Hello, Nanette Darling. Oh, I'm so glad you came over. What kept you, darling, up watching Uncle Max make another million? <laughs> Who are the pallbearers? Costumes, scenery, theater manager. They want a piece of the show, but... I'm saving that for the right party. Mm. What took you so long, baby? I had a little trouble convincing her she belonged up here. I knew you couldn't stay sore at me once you'd seen me again, honey. That's the old psychology. It's the old malarkey. Nan came up to see a rehearsal. Where do you get that Nan business? What do you want me to call her? Lucille? Miss Carter will do. Now that you're back in my life again, honey, who knows? Maybe old Niagara Falls will start beckoning. <laughs> I came here to see some numbers, Larry, not to talk about Niagara Falls. Consider the theater yours, baby. We'll be breaking for lunch pretty soon. You and I'll cut over to Antoine's for one of our old-time get-togethers. I'm afraid I can't today. Sure you can. I've got everything all set. What number would you like to hear? I wanted to hear T for two. T for two. What for? It's the only weak number in the show. I'm thinking of tossing it out. Go ahead, Jimmy. Give her I only have eyes for you. Okay, have it your way. Come on, Ann. You can sit down front. Put something in it, Jimmy. Give me the works. Don't worry, Casanova. You're just about to get them. Hello, Love Apple. I, I thought you were backstage. So I gathered. When did Miss Richwich come back in your life? And what's with that fade-out kiss? Just to come on. Everybody else is broke. She's got money they haven't even printed yet. I've got to get it on the line. The boys are breathing down my neck as she popped in. And I suppose that quiet table at Antoine's is riding along with the gag. I can't fish for 25 Gs in a one-arm lunch. Those things need lighting and atmosphere. While you're sucking in atmosphere, where do I eat? The lunch wagon, as usual. That's what I thought. As soon as I get the check to keep this clam bake cooking, I'll come right over. Well, that's real clubby. While you nibble on the breast of potridge, I'm choking down that shin of water buffalo. Take it easy, will you, baby? All right, Jimmy, let's go. Are the stars out tonight? I don't know if it's cloudy or bright Cause I only have eyes for you, dear The moon may be high But I can't see a thing in the sky Cause I only have eyes for you Millions of people go by, but they all disappear from view. And I only have eyes for you.
numbers like that. They'll kill the audience. You can't go wrong throwing in 25 Gs. I don't recall mentioning the subject. Wait a minute. What about lunch? Singing lesson. I haven't time. What's 25 Gs? You'd spend that much on a maternity hospital for destitute rabbits. It's not the amount, Larry. It's your attitude about it. What attitude? Do you think that I'd stoop to dishonesty? Wouldn't you? Well, I might squat a little, but not for you. I'm sorry, Larry. I can't depend on you. Wait a minute. I might be able to get by on 15. Bye, Jimmy. Bye, Tommy. Bye. I wonder if Sigfield had to go through all this. Tommy! Jimmy! Conference in the lobby. I still don't get it. If she refused you the money, what are we coming out to her house for? Does Babe Ruth give up when he's got two strikes on him? Yeah, but you got four. Now, just what am I supposed to do? Give her a sob story. She's a pushover for anyone in trouble. No dice. I'm not being a heel for your benefit. It's for her benefit, too. She'll double her money. All right. Why doesn't he do it? I've known her too long. I can't suddenly come up with a starving mother. And he hasn't any afflictions. If a broken leg would help, I could fix it for him. This is it. Get a load of that setup. Well, here we are, fellas. Okay, Mac, what's the swindle box say? Three seventy-five. Three seventy-five? I can buy A T and T for less. There's one dollar. 175, 178. Don't just stand there, start digging. It's going to be a pretty shallow trench. Here's a buck. Is the Mexican dollar all right? No. Give me that change. 284. Here's another dime. Here's a quarter. Is 12 cents what the stamps are? No stamps. 10, 35, 45, 95, and 278. 375, right on the button. Come on, boys. I didn't think we'd make it. Open sesame. I don't like the whole setup. Well, as I live and try not to breathe, Larry Blair. Still don't like me, eh? That wins you the honeymoon to Burma and a home in fashionable Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> Never mind the Bon Mots. I want to see Nanette. I believe she was vaccinated against you. I'll see if it took. Charming, isn't she? Shall we start walking home? We can't even afford that. If you can cut the cadenza, I have evil tidings. The cadenza is cut. What's up? To phrase it elegantly, Blabbermouth is here again. Larry? Hi, baby. Didn't wait for the welcome mat. I knew I'd be flowers in spring. Mm -hmm. That's for nothing. They're not worth a penny more. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Tommy. Hello, Nanette. Hello, Nan. Nice to see you. I didn't want to barge in like this, but Larry insisted. He's the insistent type. Uh, <laughs> well, what are we standing around for? Uncle Max still got that high-powered bootlegger? How about some real scotch? How about some French champagne? Swell. I'll try to arrange a passport for you. Pauline, would you mind telling Stevens to serve drinks? Here we go, in that thirsty old rut again. Larry, if this is about that conversation we had at the theater, it was final. Forget it. We'll raise the dose someplace else. It's just that the kid was heartbroken because you didn't stay to hear the rest of his numbers. Oh, he's been itching to get to a piano and play them for you. Come on, Jimmy. Tear her heart out. Well, I'd like you to hear T for two. Why waste time on the flop polar? Give her I want to be happy. That'll sell a million copies. Let him play what he pleases. Picture you upon my knee Just tea for two and two for tea Just me for you and you for me alone You like it? There's genius in that head. Tunes that'll make the world a better place to live in. It's so nice to hear you appreciate someone beside yourself. The kids sort of get under my skin. Melodies like those coming from a heart filled with despair. Despair? His mother's an invalid. The guy spent hundreds on doctors. Nothing they can do for him. Mm, that's terrible. Got a sister, too. Sweetest kid in the world. 
He's depending on this show to send it to Arizona. Well, why hasn't he said something about all this? Not the type. Proud as a lion. I'm just scared of frustration. I might seal him up. Probably never put another note on paper. You sold it, kid. Has it got anything to net? I think it has everything. Try it with me. Go ahead, baby. Try it. I'd love to. I'm discontented with homes that are rented, so I have invented my own. Darling, this place is a lover's oasis where life's weary chase is unknown. Far from the cry of the city where flowers pretty caress the streams. Cozy to hide in, to live side by side in. Don't let it abide in my dreams. Picture you upon my knee, just tea for two and two for tea. Just me for you and you are me alone. Nobody near us can see us or hear us. No friends or relations on weekend vacations. We won't have it known, dear, that we own a telephone. Sung right. I still think it needs something. It needs a voice like the Nets. Don't worry, B sells the number. Yeah, to New York and Philadelphia at the same time. This number could set me up and solve all my problems. Larry, I've changed my mind. I'm going to let you have the money you need. Baby, you're wonderful. I knew you couldn't let us down. You got too much heart, too much feeling. Too much money. Here's to you, baby, in a prosperous partnership. As long as she's putting up the money, Larry, why don't you let her play the lead? Okay. Jimmy, do you think I could? I know you could. If you weren't good, I'd be the first to tell you. We need you more than you need us. Take it easy, kid. It's a wonderful idea, but maybe Nan feels she ain't ready for Broadway just yet. Larry wants her to wait until she's old enough to play character parts. Well, why? She's a new face and a new personality, and just what we need. And she's as ready as she'll ever be. Ready for what, or am I too young to know? Larry's show. Oh, I'd love to do it, Jimmy. It's what I've been waiting for. Go ahead, Larry. She's a natural. You keep out of this. This happens to be my department. I'd shove you in in a minute, baby, but what about B? You can't just break a contract like that. As soon as this one clicks, I'll build a show for you. This stuff is smooth. Didn't even feel it going down. Now listen, Larry. I'm trying to get a hit. And if B's going to sing my songs and murder them, I'd rather take them out. Oh, now you're starting. Well, I wouldn't put up a dime without your songs. Wait a minute. He's right. Be, be terrific as Sally. Well, this character won't do for a dime. Baby, you're in. Let's have the dough and I'll hustle right back to town and get things set. Most of the country flat on its broke. And you're going to trust your money to light-fingered Louie? Yes. You don't need a secretary. You need a keeper. I know what I'm doing, Pauline. You'll have the money by tomorrow. I'll get Uncle Max to sell some bonds. Swell, baby. I'll leave the details to you. Call me the minute they're settled. Let's go, boys. Circle 61010. Circle 61010. Remember, if you have any money left, that offer of marriage still goes at any time. <laughs> Bye, Tommy. Bye. So long. I'll expect you to the theater tomorrow morning at 10.30. Don't be too sure. I may have her committed by 10. <laughs> <laughs> We're back in business again, baby. Don't forget, circle 61010. Right. Bye. Bye, Nan. Bye, Nan. 
Get Uncle Max on the phone. That guy's got you hypnotized again. Will you stop worrying, Pauline? I'm getting what I want for less than I expected to pay. Now get Uncle Max and hurry. Mind not to reason why, mind but to do and dial. Ladies and gentlemen, from the President of the United States comes this message. The fundamental business of the country is on a sound and prosperous basis. Bank deposits have increased. Maybe in Washington, prosperous it still is. Tell me, how busted I am busted? It will take weeks for the accountants to figure out you haven't got enough to pay the accountants. Uh, but what do I do? Live simply. In six months or so, stocks may come back and be normal again. Maybe in six months, I won't be normal. One thing you can do is stop Nanette's spending. If you don't, you may have to mortgage that Westchester estate. Oh, no, no, no. no. Nanette's home never will I touch. A solemn promise I made to her father. I will... Hello? Hello, Uncle Max. It's Nanette. What should I tell her? The truth. You've got to explain it eventually. Now, how, how can I explain? I up in paper. Oh, all of them in paper. And I should explain it. Hello? I'm sorry, darling. I can't, I can't talk now. Big stockholders meeting. Mm -hmm. all, all day. I will be home early. Take care of yourself. Hello? Don't, don't spend any money. No, no, don't buy. Don't. Oh, goodbye. That's all right. Everything I tried was for none is good. Is that bad? These stocks were. In addition, you've fallen for every crackpot scheme that walked in here. Oil in Texas. Gold in Alaska. No, 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 no. Gold was in Texas and oil in Alaska. Everything lavish, expensive, sumptuous. Uh, that, that reminds me. Come. I'll show you something. Come. Now I'll show you something. Look. What the devil is that? Tidy boy, it is called. A pants hanger and press at the same time. Remarkable it is how this little thing knows what to do. i show you how it works. Just a minute. From the Leviathan to a rowboat. Why everything you doubt? The simple thing sometimes dividends pay. The tie claps, the zipper. Don't forget the safe safety pin for babies. Now, was it my fault it was so safe the diapers they couldn't get off at all? In this little gizmo could be millions. First the court you plug in, and in... Mr. Bloomhouse, will you call this number, please? Just a little demonstration, Hattie. It's all right. Mr. Bloomhouse has always been eccentric. What does she mean, eccentric? It's an expression they use up at the asylum. Come, I, I show you this. In the night, this roller is hot. And it goes up and down the pens. In the morning, fresh light from the tailor. Huh? Yes. Well, I'm sorry I can't spend a night watching it, but I have a law practice. Now remember, no more promoting. And cut Nanette spending to the bone for the rest of the year. Maybe not anywhere I'll get, but I'll really talk to her. You might solve a lot of things if you just try saying no for a change. No to what? Everyone who comes in here with a share of stock or, or a, or a half-baked gadget like that. Try turning down a few. If you could say no, 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 instead of yes, yes for 24 hours, you'd have saved $100,000. Remember now. No, 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 yes, yes, yes. Verts. No, no, no. Sucks plunge again. <laughs> Billions lost in market. <laughs> Government bonds hold firm. Lean forward, sweetheart. I'm going to make you comfortable. No, don't, don't bother. Close it. Puts me only to the paper. Oh, now, here. Isn't that better? Yes, much better. Nanny. Did you enjoy your dinner, darling? 
Yes, fine, fine. A li little too expensive, maybe. Perhaps we, we should cut now. Cut down for what? It was a simple dinner. Roast beef, salad, crepe Suzette. A couple of fried eggs has the same vitamin. And the, and the chicken, she works for less money, no? Now, you know that eggs give you indigestion. Uh, other things also do. None of my... <laughs> Uncle Max, I have a surprise for you. Uh, she has a surprise for me. Uh -huh. oh, Shall I pour your drink, sir? No, no, no. I, I pour it my... My, mm, my scotch it shrinks, too. Alcohol evaporates in the summer, sir. So. Uh, in the Sahara Desert, that much couldn't evaporate. You might as well know the truth, Uncle Max. Larry was here. We've made up again. With all my troubles, that loudmouth back in my life comes here. <sighs> Will there be anything else, sir? Now, no, what else could there be? Put lux on everything, including the lux. Very well, sir. Larry has changed, Uncle Max. He's mellowed. Yes, sir. And this catch anyone would. Wherever that Larry Blair shows up, I smell a rat. Calm down, darling. I know what I'm doing. I want you to hear something. Something else there is. A very beautiful song. In mood I am not for songs. It was written by a brilliant young composer, Uncle Max. A friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Mellow, I suppose he also got. Now you just listen. Picture me upon your knee With tea for two and two for tea Just me for you and you for me alone Nobody near us to see us or hear us No friends or relations on weekend vacations We won't have it known, dear That we own the telephone Day will break and I'll awake and start to bake a sugar cake for you to take for all the boys to see. But I am full of tea. With dinner, I had six sauces. Now, you just relax, and I'm going to fix you a nice drink. Relax, she says. <sighs> Wait till you hear me singing that song in the crinoline gown with a hoop skirt and a lace parasol. Another fancy dress affair. Nothing, a, a costume like that cost how much? Just $25,000. <gasps> I'll get it. Don't move. I can't move. I want to put the money into Larry's show, Uncle Max. Oh, Larry, so that's different. I thought... What? But I'm going to play the leading part. For $25,000, all the parts you should play. Positively. All you have to do is sell a few of my securities. That's more positively. Positively impossible. You have to stop this spending. But it isn't spending, Uncle Max. It's an investment. $25,000 is a mere drop in the bucket. Have you looked in the bucket lately? No, I don't want to talk about this anymore. But you're going to have to because I've already said yes. That's the trouble. Everybody says yes. If everybody says no, the banks would be bulging again. What are you talking about? Sit down. Sit down. If no, you would say to everybody for 24 hours, $100,000 to me it would be worth. Could you make that a little clearer? Don't blame I speak. $100,000 if you say no for 24 hours. Do you mean it? But, but I don't mean I don't say. Uncle Max, you've got a bet. I, uh, well, why do you mean that? For $100,000, I'll say no to everything for 24 hours. Oh, don't be ridiculous. I am just saying what early... And I'll give you better odds. 
That's what ends. I'm not interested. It's 10 o'clock Saturday. I'm going to say no to everything for 48 hours, and all you have to do is pay me $25,000. I open my mouth immediately. You put your foot in it. But you just said you didn't say what you didn't mean. You're going to Welsh on me now? That's not the question. How could I know if you said yes or no? Huh? Uncle Max, ever since I was a little girl, you and I have played fair in everything, haven't we? Don't you trust me? With my life. But this is money. Then we'll leave it in the hands of a third party, okay? Pauline! Luckily, I just happened to be waiting at the keyhole. Anything wrong? I just bet Uncle Max $25,000 that I could say no to everything until 10 o'clock Monday night. Well, that sounds perfectly normal. Of course, we'll have to put a little padding on these walls. Now, you're to stay with me and see that I keep my bet. What kind of a bet? You are not putting up anything. Oh, I'm just risking my chance at what I've been working for, hoping for. And if I lose, I won't ask for one thing for a whole year. Uh, just let's forget the whole thing. For a year? Yes. 365 days, excepting leap year, which didn't get me any place either. Just bare expenses. No, no more means. Singing lesson, dancing lesson, no more big parties. No, not even a new dress. Uh, every question you would answer, not wriggling around to change the meaning. A plain, straightforward no to every single question. Cross my heart. Get ready. Get set. Go. We're off. <laughs> this is going to be fun. <laughs> Funny. I'm already laughing. <laughs> if the money I, I was to give you now, the bet you would call off? Yes? No. And don't you try any more of your childish tricks. If I'd said yes and no in the right places, I'd be wearing mink. Will there be anything else, sir? Some bicarbonate. And call my lawyer. In trouble, I think I am again. Very well, sir. The President of the United States assures the people that the fundamental business of the country is on a sound and prosperous basis. Stevens! In Washington yesterday. And see how much for this you can get. Sound and prosperous basis. Hello, Larry. I'm sorry to have kept you so long. It's okay, sweet. I've been sitting here on my little old iron cot just waiting. Everything is fine. I'll have the money on Monday. Swell. I knew you'd come through, baby. I can turn over now and hit the hay. Be at the theater early tomorrow. Happy dreams, sweetheart. 25 G's, love apple. We're in. Here, pick a pawn ticket. It's on me. Oh, my platinum wristwatch. Larry, you're wonderful. I know it's sugar, but keep on telling me. Oh, Larry. Hello there. I'm Hi. waiting for you. Yeah, we've been waiting for you. Is it a beautiful day? That's snappy dialogue for 10 o'clock in the morning. I was afraid you'd change your mind. Oh, you don't know me very well. I'm Pauline Hastings, if anyone's interested. Oh, yes, Miss Carter's secretary. I've been promoted. I'm a private eye. Is Larry here? In the lobby with the wolves. Well, if this Nanette Carter don't show up in another five minutes, there won't be any first or second act. So she's a little late. Fine thing when a guy with the integrity of Gandhi and the genius of Ziegfeld has to be distracted by a few crummy bills. But she's 25 minutes late. She's bringing 25 Gs, a grand a minute. Where can you better that? There they are, down there. Well, there's plenty of room to talk in here. Nan, baby! Oh, I was worried about you. Thought maybe you had a traffic accident. No, she was unfortunate. She got here. What'd you drag her along for? Termite control. Have you told Beatrice about the switching parts? Now, one problem at a time, honey. Come meet the boys. Come on, Polly. See what I mean? We'll see you after you're finished, Nan. Boys, I want you to meet Miss Nanette Carter, the future Mrs. Larry Blair. And there's a future for you. How, How do you do? do? Felicitation. Now, Miss Carter, let's get on to business. Miss Carter, do you stand ready to guarantee Mr. Blair's indebtedness? Why, I... Careful. No. No. Uh, <laughs> you don't understand, baby. They mean the 25 grand that you promised to have on Monday. I know what they mean, and I'll have it by then. Oh, well, Monday will be all right. Uh, you had me there for a minute, honey. Can we depend on your check for $25,000 on Monday night? Why, I... Uh-uh. No. Anyone care to try for 50000 
Do you guarantee anything for this man? No. Uh-huh. That's all I wanted to know. Excuse me? Yeah, that'll hold me, too. I'll see you later. Bon voyage. How could you do this to me? It was a pleasure. Larry, everything is going to be all right. What do you mean, everything's all right? I just lost my scenery, my costumes, my theater. But you'll get them all back on Monday when I bring the check. You just said you wouldn't have it on Monday. But I will. If only people would stop asking me questions. What questions got to do with it? Couldn't you have said yes? No! Uh, one of us has gone nuts. Do you know what this means? The castle disband, the course will get other jobs. No, they won't. You can bring them all to my place until Monday. Oh, that'll be nice. All 40 of them? Well, why not? We have enough food, don't we, Pauline? If we haven't, they can eat each other. Supposing Uncle Max doesn't loosen. He will. You just said... Never mind what I said. You've got to trust me. Now, you go and invite them all up to Westchester. I guess I'll have to work this out in my own head. It's going to be mighty lonely up there, partner. Sometimes I think you're losing your mind. How could you make a bet that stupid? Believe me, easy it wasn't. What makes you think she hasn't said yes while you've been away? Her word. Cheating and wouldn't do. No. If a bachelor you weren't, better you'd know. You got me talking that way. <laughs> All right, Willem. Stay over Sunday. A nice weekend if we live in the country. We relax and take things easy. <sighs> Fine. I could stand a rest. Look what they are doing. These silly fellows make a mistake. Hello, hello, put it back. Put it back. You have, you have the wrong address. We, we have pianos. You ain't kidding, bud. This is the third we delivered this morning. <laughs> we got 36 army costs and blankets. Where do you want them? You think war maybe has been declared again? You, I, I cannot. I'm... Hurry up with that piano. We're waiting. Well, don't just stand there. Give them a hand. We want to get rolling. The right house it is? Of course. William, look. look. Who are those people? How can I tell? They have got nothing on. Shoo. Come on. Come on. Welcome 
Welcome to Insanity Lodge. I'm a combination usher and chambermaid. Who are these people? Actors or lunatics? I haven't made up my mind. See what I mean? What kind of language is Ben to Ben? Swiss S. Where is Miss Nanette? I'm in no mood for riddles. Thank you. I, I want to see her. Look, I've got 32 cots to make up, and I'm three sheets in the wind already. M- make them later. Tell her behind the study. I wouldn't go in there if I were... Oh, well. They're old enough to know. Max, this atmosphere is hardly conducive to business. <laughs> this is all your fault with the threats and no foolishness. Never in my life I... Come. In here we can be private. Now, girls, here's the idea. Watch me closely. You're disturbing me. Please go. <laughs> this I don't believe. Go! Huh? When skies are gray and you say you are blue I'll send the sun smiling through Skies are gray, say you are blue. Well, what are you gonna do? I'll send old Sal smiling through. I want to be happy, but I won't be happy till I make you happy too. I can make you happy too. Oh, you're going to be swell. You have nothing to worry about. I'm so nervous I have duck bumps. Well, that's a good sign. I want you to be on edge. And don't worry, I will be until Monday night. What happens Monday night? Either Uncle Max or I will have a stroke. By the way, Jimmy, how's your sister? My sister? Mm-hmm. Oh, she's doing fine. Why, the doc says her leg's going to be as good as new. Her leg? I thought it was her lung. Well, it's a vicious circle. I'll explain it to you sometime. Do you mind if I ask you a personal question? I'd rather you didn't ask me any questions. This one's important. Are you engaged to Larry? I mean, is it definite? No, it's not definite. Does that mean you don't love him? No. What does it mean? Jimmy, will you please stop asking me questions? I'm allergic to them. There's one more question I'd like to ask. Will you kiss me? No. What do you want? Anything you might have left over. Your uncle's looking for you. He's frothing in every pore. Mm, Poor Uncle Max. I better go and explain things. Where is he? By now, possibly under three acrobats. We'll have to squeeze through the house and see if we can find him. Pardon us. It's all right. Sign here, please, Nanette. Does this whole business strike anyone else as slightly imbecilic? Nobody asked you. I volunteered. Can I go now? I have 32 cuts to make up. I want you to witness this agreement. How would you like it signed, Bed Chief Annie? May I ask where you sleep? I didn't know you cared. Until the expiration of this contract, you will share Miss Carter's room and keep awake. What for? Well, it's possible you might say yes in your sleep. Haven't we all? And if one word you say about this, your job you lose. All 32 cots? 
If, however, you detect Nanette saying yes, you get a bonus of $250. Just a minute. Do you think I would betray my best friend for a measly $250? I'll take it. <laughs> Oh, do, do, do what you done, done, done before, baby. Do, do, do what I do, do, do with baby. Let's try again, sigh again, fly again to heaven. Baby, see, it's ABC. I love you and you love me. I know, no, no, what a bow, bow, bow should do. Baby. So don't, don't, don't say it won't, won't, won't come true, baby. My heart begins to hum. Dum, de dum, de dum, dum, dum. So do, do, do what you've done, done, done before. Oh, do, do, do what you've done, done, done before, baby. Do, do, do what I do, do, do what don't. Let's try again, sigh again, and fly again to heaven. Baby, see, it's ABC. I love you and you love me. You dear, 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 little dear, 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 come here. Snappy. And see, 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 little me, 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 make you happy. My heart begins to sigh. So do, do, do What you done, 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 done before Oh, that was swell then When Larry Blair gives a weekend, it bubbles Anything you don't see, just ask for Expense means nothing around here Oh, Mr. Blair, when will we rehearse my part? Part? Oh, yeah, stick around I'll go over it with you later All right, girls, in the living room for Romeo Mine Come on, oh, step on him. No. Well, here goes the merry-go-round again. Is this a show or a dance marathon? Put your whip away, Simon. I'll go, but I'll take my tea with me to keep me company. Don't let the water out till I get back. I'll be over on the chaise lounge, Mr. Blair. Huh? Oh, yeah. Sahib, your panatellas. Thanks. Uh, take a couple. It'll last you through the day. Thanks. It's going to be a long one. You know, that living room's going to be kind of cramped. Knock out a wall. Don't bother me with details. Okay. I hope you know what you're doing. Hi. Hi, Nan. Can we get together later in a rose arbor or something? I'll have the gardener build one. Good. <laughs> Everything all right? Just swell, baby. I'll probably rehearse all my shows out here. Fresh air and sunshine give me ideas. Why isn't Miss Darcy here? B? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, she had something to do in town. Probably show up tonight or tomorrow. Well, how'd she take the switch in parts? Tickle pink after I explain things to her. Bea will do anything I tell her. I was wondering why she wasn't here. I'd much rather bow out, you know, than cause any friction. Honey, don't even talk about bowing out. We're all depending on you. I mean, that face, that figure, that voice. They won't put any slip-up on the check. No, you'll have it Monday night. Excuse me, Nan, but they're waiting for you to rehearse. Well, thanks. Now, listen, big shot. You can kid Nanette along, but you can't me. Meaning what? Meaning you haven't said a word to be about switching the parts. Look, Chopin, you stick to the ivories. Let me handle the delicate matters. You hadn't the guts to tell her. You're just stringing Nan along for the money you can get from her. After we're married, it's community property, isn't it? I'm only using my own money if you look at it from the right angle. Stop kidding yourself. She has no intention of marrying you. Where do you get your information? From the feed box. As far as you're concerned, she'd just as soon marry a chimpanzee. Where's she going to find a chimpanzee with my talent? Here, buy yourself a driver's license. Hey, you, Buster. Buster? Just a moment. Are you the new guy they hired to play the butler? What I play around here shouldn't happen to a dog. Who are you? Beatrice Darcy. I play the lead in this clam bake. And I'm looking for a no-good, chiseling, double-crossing stinker. That description I recognize. Is it too poor, relaxing? Well, I'll settle that. Wait, wait, wait a minute. 
Right now, it is maybe better you don't disturb him. Why not? Busy he is fixing it for Nanette Carter to play the leading part. Nanette Carter? Mm-hmm. I play the lead. Maybe yes, maybe no. In your place, I was going to find out. Go, go. I'll find out, Pop. You can bet your underwear. That I have already lost. This isn't very much of a part, just one page. We'll enlarge it as time goes on. Let's hear it. I love you, darling. I always will. There's nothing I can do about it. Keep going. What else does it say? Jasmine goes into his arms in a passionate embrace. Okay, follow directions. I've got to see what you have to offer. Remember where we left off? Oh, Mr. Breyer! You're no seal, Roscoe. You've got to come up for air. The water's fine, sweetheart. Did you bring your bathing suit? I've got better ideas. Why wasn't I told about this chowder party? I thought you'd like a free weekend. You're up on all the numbers. All except the one about Nanette Carter taking my part. That's just economics, baby. It'll work out. Be a good girl and let Papa handle things. Mm, I got a glimpse of what you were just handling. I'll take care of this personally. <laughs> Wait a minute, baby. You crabbed the whole setup. Miss Carter goes in the number. To so watch closely. Oh me, oh my, oh you. No other girl will do. Cares will be forever ended, and this world would be so splendid if you cared enough, dear, to be true. Oh me, oh my, oh you. Those lips, those eyes of blue. You're so lovely, you're so sweet. Simply lift me off my feet. Oh, me. Oh, my. Oh, you. All right, kids, follow me. think you're trying to slip over? Nothing. Larry told you about the change in parts. Well, you're going to play Lucille. It's just as good a part. Oh, yeah? Well, isn't that just cozy? 
I'm left in New York while you sharpies pull a fast one. Well, now let me tell you something. I love show business, don't you? Wait a minute, I'll do the talking. Please watch while you are dripping. All right, Johnny Wise Miller, talk. Wait till I get my breath. Now, now, take it easy, B. It's just a switch in parts. That's all. I was going to tell you about it, but, it, well, it slipped my mind. Slipped your mind? His mind can slip through a watch spring. Mr. Blair, what about my part? Stick around, honey. You'll get it right down the center of your skull. Oh, be reasonable, B. You get Call of the Sea, the best number in the show. I'll play the lead and get Call of the Sea, too. So tell Miss National Bank to go peddle her account someplace else. Look, 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 look. Everybody fights. No one gets any place. Maybe I could settle this. Who's this character? That's Uncle Max, honey. Well, that settles everything. All right, Uncle Max. Blow. No, blow I don't. I stay right here. He uh, happens to be Nanette's guardian. Uh, sure, sugar. He uh, owns the joint. Oh. Oh, well, that's different. Go ahead, Uncle Max. Speak your piece. I speak. Nanny, excuse me just for a moment. Do you think, darling, uh, you can play the part better than this young lady? Huh? No. Why, of course she can. She'll play rings around her. Over my dead body. Now, nobody wants your body. Do <laughs> uh, you think, darling, uh, that, that young man's music is good enough for your voice? Huh? No. Do you want to play the part or in the show put money? No. So, tomorrow morning everybody out. All the vultures fly home. Yes. Oh, come on, fellas. Snap out of it. We'll get backing someplace else. Come on, Jimmy. Hit those keys. I'll show you how this number should be sung. Nice try, honey. Look, baby, it's all a mistake. I can fix it in five minutes. You should have fixed it a little earlier, Larry. I'm not well. Not well at all. None is my darling. I'm very sorry. None. There are times a man better off would be if he hung himself. Oh, me. Oh, my. Oh, you. It is one after time. Oh, I the guy will do. You know, I may be wrong, but it seems to me you've been acting very strangely of late. Oh, no, I haven't, Jimmy. You imagine it. I don't understand what this is all about, man. Well, I'm sorry, Jimmy. I... Of course, maybe I'm not supposed to. But if you can't tell me the reason for the sudden switch, you might at least tell me why you've avoided me ever since. Well, you see, I had a headache, and, and Uncle Max let me stay in my room for dinner. You have to have his permission to go to your room? No. There's something about all this I don't quite get. Do you have a cigarette? No, thanks. If you didn't say no thanks, I'd better look up a psychiatrist. Why change my mind? That seems to be about the best thing you do. Jimmy, I'm sorry I said that about your music. I didn't really mean it. I don't think you meant anything you said. And I'm pretty sure I know the reason why. You know, in a way, I'm just as glad the show's off. T for two wouldn't have clicked without you singing it. Well, who said the show's off? You certainly wouldn't put up the money after what Larry did to you. Look, I gave my word. And I'm just like my Uncle Max. I never Welsh. All those people have worked hard to make this show a hit, Jimmy. We mustn't let them down. That's a wonderful way to look at it. Whether I sing your songs or someone else does, they're going to be heard. And they're going to get over. They're just too good not to. I wouldn't bet on it. Well, I would. They're going to bring the world a lot of pleasure and happiness, Jimmy. Your mother and sister are going to be so proud of you. Yeah. There's something about them I'd like to explain. That's not hard to understand. I had Nanette set up for a pigeon if you hadn't yakety yacked all over the place. The setup got just a little bit offline. That can happen, too. We're going to be married, aren't we? Would I double-cross the girl I'm going to marry? Oh, brother, you'd double-cross yourself if you thought you could make a buck. I'm sorry you had to get it that way, Nan. It's only what I expected from Larry, Jimmy. He hasn't soured you on all men, has he? That depends on the man. Ash! 
Excuse me. Gesundheit. <laughs> of course, it's none of my business, but it looks to me like you're getting kicked in the short ribs all the way around. I suppose it does look that way. Why don't you just run up and down the hall yelling yes? Then I'd get a fur coat and Mr. Bloomhouse would get rid of his heartburn. <laughs> With the bench presser, be careful. It bites. I'm watching it, sir. No matter who says what, my furniture get back in the morning. That's impossible, sir. Stevens, experiences you have had. How do you get the woman to say yes? Well, at our time of life, sir, that's quite a problem. <laughs> Shall I plug this contraption in, sir? No, I plug you started. Started. <laughs> Will there be anything else, sir? We're being shelled. Oh, it's hysterical Charlie again. Put out the light. Why does a girl always say that to me? I didn't expect you. No, come to the window. Something interesting you will see. Come. He's coming up. Shall I get some hot water? No. This is one time you can say, yes, I won't squeal. Valley Forge barefooted. Who? Hmm? Who? Hmm? George Washington. Now keep your big mouth shut. Man. Man. Why didn't you answer me? I could break my neck. This ladder needs dental work. Don't be that way, baby. We can straighten everything out. The fact that I didn't invite Bea proves that I wanted you to get the part. You've got class, baby. Bee's just a little two-bit honky-tonk performer. This will show you who comes first with me. Hey, look out! I'm slipping! Catch me! <laughs> hey, do it again. Nan didn't see it. Hello. Hello. Who is who is ringing so many bells? Good morning, Max. Oh, it's you. Early. What what's bad today? This is good news. If you can get down here and sign some releases before the market opens, we may be able to salvage some assets. Got just an hour to make it. With bells on, I will be there. By 10 o'clock at my office, we will be, yes? No. But, but we must. Couldn't, couldn't a little faster we go? No. Please forget about it, yes and no. Yes? No. 
Only 20 minutes we have left. Maybe killed we get back to make it. Complications yet? Good morning. Don't you think you were driving a little fast? No. No? Everything I can explain, officer. For business, I am late. If any late I am, there will be no business. Let's see your driver's license, please. Yes, driver's license. Are you missing Annette Carter? No. Of, of course she's Nanette Carter right there. It says so, please. Now, just a minute. Doesn't she know who she is? Sometimes she gets confused. Is this your car, miss? No. Well, where'd you get it? Out of the garage. Our, please, our garage. Let's see the registration. I haven't got it. Just a minute, officer. Immediately. I can tell you everything. I think in my pocket I have it. In my pants, maybe. I put it in my... Yesterday, I... 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 Golf or basketball? Is it your business if my legs I like cool? To New York I must got before Wall Street opens. You can hear the Dow Jones at the police station. Police station? Officer, if you can keep us there until 10 o'clock tonight, I'd appreciate it very much. I think that can be arranged. Wait a minute. I am Max Blumhouse from Carter and Blumhouse. And I'm Terry Clancy of Highway 31. Follow me. You, you cannot do this with me. I have to be in New York before Wall Street opens. Come on, Uncle Max. Get in the car. An outrage, this is. An American citizen, I am. A taxpayer. Formerly. It's your own fault. You pulled the throttle. Yeah, all that the market is open. Money I am losing, I haven't even got. The President of the United States repeats that the fundamental business of the country is on a sound and prosperous basis. Cruelty disease. Run into a tree. No, no. Shee! I will show them. Oh, Mr. Blair, do you feel like rehearsing my part this morning? Do I look like I feel like it? In spite of strains, bruises, rain, sleet, or snow, the show must go on, Mr. Blair. You're getting all balled up with the post office. Don't bother me. Oh, laughing waters. Where have you two been? In the pocket. We've been in jail. Heavens to Betsy, what's she done now? I murdered a nosy woman. Say, that's a snappy outfit. Who's your tailor? <laughs> we thought you were lost. Where have you been all day? Where you should have been for the last ten years. Hello, honey. I was beginning to worry about you. This is very touching, Larry. The kid here got a little bad news this afternoon. What sort of bad news? About his sister. Oh, no, Jim. Now, wait a minute, Larry. He didn't want to tell you, but I persuaded him he ought to. You're used to handling those things. Of course. What happened to her? Nothing. The fact that I never had one. My mother lives in Philadelphia, and she's quite hale and hearty. It was an embryo of his ten-cent store of mine to pry money out of you. Thanks, Jimmy. But you're telling me something I already knew. So I've nurtured a Benedict Arnold in my bosom, a Judas Iscariot. Oh, shut up. That drops the show right in the sewer. But what do you care? You're a knight in shining armor. All right, Sir Lancelot, start peddling your tune to the nightclubs and radio stations again. Stop bleeding, will you? You'll get the money. What makes you think she'll give out to this? She told me last night she was going through with it for the sake of the kids. She did? That's great. You better stick with B. She's your kind. You can chisel together. <laughs> I gotta tell the company. Don't want him to lose that old spirit. Oof. Young man, are you in love with my vote? What? what? A simple question it is. Do you love Nanette? Well, since you put it in such a roundabout way, yes. Well, why, why, why don't you find out if she loves you? How? The easy solution I have ask her. You mean you approve of me? You want no, me? No, 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 not me. Propose to her. Well, she's a little upset right now. Good. Yes, she might say by accident. Go ahead. Now, go, go ahead and don't shilly shilly. And only yes, take for an answer, no? Thanks. What is it, Jimmy? 
Have you thought of something else? I don't blame you for being sore, Nan. You got quite a deal. It's my fault for letting it get this far. What made you weaken? I found out I was in love with you. Oh, isn't that approach a little corny, Jimmy? It's just a statement of fact. I didn't expect you to believe it. Well, it's a little difficult under the circumstances. Yeah, I suppose it is. But it's the truth. All I want is a chance to prove it. What do you say, Nan? Did Uncle Max suggest this? Not altogether. He just backed me up. Oh, I see. Have I got a chance, Nan? Right now, Jimmy, I have to say no. Does that mean if I wait a little while, it, it might be yes? Well, I have to say no to that, too. I see. I guess I never should have asked. He loved my music, and I was silly enough to put a personal element into it. Oh, your music is you, Jimmy. Well, then you can't love one without the other. Oh, Nan, I'm not asking you to boil over. I'd be satisfied if you if you just cared a little. Do you, Nan? No, Jimmy. No. Well, I stuck my chin out and got what I deserved. Goodbye, Nan. Jimmy, where are you going? The other side of the tracks. I guess I never should have skipped over. Would everyone be quiet for just a minute? Please. I have a very important announcement to make. In exactly one minute, I have a surprise for you. I can't wait. <laughs> Say anything so much in my life. Just a minute, ma'am. Would you mind letting us in on the gag? Well, you see, I bet Uncle Max $25,000 and I won it. Oh, now I can tell Jimmy how I really feel. You better tell me. Jimmy left for New York. Oh, no. Well, he wouldn't go without seeing me. Never mind, Jimmy. Does this mean I get the dough? Do I get the lead? You're back on the other part, Love Apple. Back to work, kids. How about my little star taking over? Do I get to do an emotional scene, Mr. Blair? Cheer up, honey. Maybe Jimmy hasn't left yet. Uncle Max! What's wrong? H has anybody got the right time? At the sound of the gong, it will be exactly two minutes past 25,000. Boing! <laughs> All right, Uncle Maxie, give me the money. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. <laughs> Oh, how do you do, Miss Hastings? Why, Mr. Early, what are you doing here so late? I have a very unpleasant duty to perform. Nanette must be told Uncle Max cannot possibly pay off this ridiculous bet. Well, would you give me that again, slowly? We'd better settle this right away. Are they all in there? Yeah, come on. Hold the music, kid. Simmer down a minute. I have a man here with a gruesome message. Okay, chum, you're on. <clears throat> you may all pack up and leave as quietly as possible. Look, mister, you're busting up a rehearsal. There won't be any more rehearsal or any more show. What are you trying to pull now? Looks like Nan is broke. And you couldn't raise a dime with a block and tackle. Broke? I can't be. Temporarily, I'm afraid you are, Nan. But my government bonds. Your uncle didn't trust the government. Uncle Max, what does he mean? My darling, your money I have handled like a Dutch uncle who should have stayed in Holland. But the 25000 that I won. Mm. Maybe in six months, stocks come back up like... <sighs> six months? What'll I eat in the meantime? The actors. I told you from the start she was a phony. Well, does this mean that I don't get to emote? I'll write you a suicide scene. We'll play it together. 
This ends my faith in human nature. I don't deserve a deal like this. How could you do it to me? Stop picking on her. She's had enough. It's all right, man. Oh, yeah? Well, then suppose you take over. You can have the whole show. Books, score, contracts, and all the debts that go with it. I'm washed up. Somebody should get a suck on the kisser for this. Well, I'm happy to oblige. Oh, did you hurt your hand? Because the Pied Piper with the rats. And my ambitions with him. Oh, well, what's wrong in being broke? I've been broke all my life, and look at me. There must be a better argument than that. I'm sorry, darling. Much that doesn't mean, but what else can I say? But I made such a fool of myself. Maybe I guess everything I do is wrong. Just a bungling old schlemmy lion. No, you're not. You're my Uncle Max. Whatever we've lost, we haven't lost each other. Well, I love you more now than I ever did. Oh, come on. Cheer up, you two. Love and money aren't everything. What am I saying? I guess it was just too good to be true. Lead on Broadway and Jimmy. On one package. If anything, that young man is worth Bet he will come to you. Sure he will, just as soon as he hears about... What did I tell you? Come in. Good evening. Only he, Mitch. Well, that's a nice, cheery welcome. Look, Nan, I've been going over these statements that Larry threw at me. Maybe there's a chance to save the show. Tommy, that fortune you wanted to marry me for is all gone. Only temporarily. The fundamental business of the county is of a sound and prosperous basis. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> I've got it all figured out. Larry's already put the company ten grand in the hole. That means we've got to raise thirty-five thousand to get the show on. Oh, nice cheering up! We've got to raise it. It's Nan's one big chance to recoup. For thirty-five thousand voids that I could buy out the sidewalks too. No dice, Tommy. Only government bonds from here on in. I even had a new title. No, 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 net, and an angle on how to raise the dough. But that's the way you feel. Something is cooking in that hoofer's head, and I'm going to take the lid off and find out what it is. Hey, Twinkle Toes, how do you figure to raise 35000 and hand me a rod? Listen, who in this wide, cold city had the integrity and foresight to sell his best friend short and is now loaded with lettuce? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo early. Right. Now, if you'll step into my office... Gladly. I just adore rolling down these quiet country roads at night. Don't you, Mr. Early? I prefer driving in the daytime. Have you enough room? Oh, I'm quite comfy, thanks. That's strange. What's the matter? I seem to be out of gas. Oh, no, Mr. Early. <laughs> I'm quite sure I filled it this morning. Oh, Mr. Early, how could you? <laughs> how could I what? Running out of gas. You know, I had no idea there was so much of the mad, impetuous boy in you. Why, well, I assure you, Miss oh, Hastings, please I... please don't explain, William. It isn't that I don't trust you. It's just that, well, you're so strong and... No, no, please don't. You mustn't. Well, what am I doing? I just don't dare trust myself in the darkness with you. Your personality simply overpowers me. Where are you going? Home, like a good little girl. Good night. Oh! 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 Is it? Wally? Oh! Are you hurt? I'm afraid I've broken my tibia. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, I'll help you to the car. Uh -huh. Oh, no. No, I can't. Can't you walk? No, no, no. I'm afraid you'll have to carry me. Oh, really? You're so muscular. I was a hammer thrower at Harvard. Oh? Class of 19. <laughs> Mm, 
very nice. A beautiful wedding ring. How much did it cost? Ten gallons of gas and a sprained ankle. Who? Regales my ear, no matter what I may do. Sometimes, perhaps, I'll have my way when I am old and turning gray. But just as yet, it's always no, 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 They ducked around 1931. That's Mom and Dad. Let's show them the outfit. Okay. Hi, Dad. Hi, Mom. Look. <laughs> well, there's a 
did you kids find these clothes? I found them in your old trunk, Mom. Say, if you look this funny, why did Dad ever marry you? <laughs> because he looked this way. Oh, no. Oh, Can't no. you do something with these children? Good grief. Are these monsters really ours? <laughs> I warned you about having children. It was your idea, darling. <laughs> we were raised a family. A boy for you, a girl for me. Can't you see how happy we would be? I still say that song stinks. <laughs> <laughs>